You're watching Morning at NTV. All right, so for Kickstarter conversation this morning, we'll be looking at the, you know, ruling that was made yesterday, the four, um, three ruling that was made by the Supreme Court with regards to the age limit. Of course, the limits, the presidential limits being lifted. So that means that uh, if you're past 75, you can still be the president of the country. If you're under 35, you can still go ahead and, you know, forge through and try and see if you can get that presidential cup. So, so to speak, we want to put you up to bit with that just in case you missed out on it. So let's take a look at what exactly transpired yesterday at the Supreme Court. President Yuri Seven is now eligible to contest in the 2021 general elections. After the Supreme Court ruled that Ugandans above 75 years and those below 35 years can contest for the presidency. Mm. In a long-awaited Supreme Court ruling, four justices led by the Chief Justice Bart Katrevi concurred with the ruling of the five justices of the Constitutional Court, who in July last year ruled in favor of the Parliament's decision to amend Article 102B on the presidential age limits. By my decision of, of 43, the decision of the Constitutional Court is upheld. This appeal therefore fails. Nine, with regard to costs, it is the unanimous decision of this court that each party shall bear their own costs in this court. The justices disagreed with the appealants, led by Elias Rukwago, Ladislaus Rakafuzi and Wandel Ogalo, that by removing the presidential age limits, the basic structure of the constitution was destroyed, and that parliament had not followed its rules and procedures in processing the amendment bill tabled by Igara West MP Rafael Majizi. That sections 1, 3, 4, and 7 of the Constitution Amendment Number 1 Act of 2018 were passed in accordance with the Constitution of Uganda. I will dismiss the appeal, the consolidated appeal, and the parties shall bear their costs in this court. I would confirm the decision of the Constitutional Court. I agree that the appeal should fail and that each party should bear their own costs. I also agree that the preliminary objections do, do, do fail for reasons she has given. However, three justices, Lydia Ntibate Mwaikirikuwinza, Eridad Mwangusha, and Paul Mugamba annulled the amendment on grounds that the majority justices of the Constitutional Court wrongly applied the doctrine of severancy in their judgments. The justices ruled that the Constitutional Court should have annulled the amendment of Article 102B as it did with the restoration of the presidential term limits, the extension of term of office for members of parliament and the president from five to seven years since all amendments were in Rafael Majezi's bill. As the consequence of the number of acts that infringed on the constitution in the process of enactment of the constitution, the act cannot be allowed to stand and is hereby annulled. The justices also concurred with the appellants that there were defaults in the certificate of compliance from the Speaker of Parliament to the President with a misrepresentation of the amended articles. This implied that the President did not assent to the exact bill passed by Parliament. That the enactment of the law is a process, and if any of the stages therein is flawed, that reshapes the entire process and reshapes the law that is enacted as a result of it. Despite all justices condemning the invasion of Parliament and torture of MPs by security forces, the four maintained that the acts of the security forces did not warranty the annulment of the amendments and advised the affected MPs to seek redress from the High Court. By not finding that the members of Parliament who were arrested and detained after their suspension were maltreated by security forces and their right to freedom from torture and human dignity violated. However, it is my finding that this in itself did not affect the passing of the amendment. This Supreme Court ruling comes after both the NRM Central Executive Committee and Parliamentary Caucus endorsed Museveni as the party's sole candidate in the 2021 general elections. Habad Ziwa, NTV. <laughs> I'm
I am I have started thinking that coming to these courts is a waste of time. I don't know whether personally I will ever bring a, a matter before Bat Katurebe, Yotam Tumwesi and company. I, I really I don't think I'll ever as a person I'll have to contemplate before I make that decision. We have not lost hope. The final court is the court of the people. So from now on, it is people power. So it's a sad day, it's a sad moment, and it has, this decision has got serious implications on the political stability of this country. It has got serious implications on the political trajectory of this country, and as well, and uh, I mean, as well as uh, rule of law and constitutionalism. So in this country, they have now confirmed, they have certified that there is no democracy. In this. He chose this day to symbolically run that they are not different from Portius Pilato, who convicted an innocent man, Jesus, and released Barnabas. Shame upon you! We are happy that even the court itself would confess that what was put across was the truth. But the, however, part of it was always taking the truth away from what court already has. So no one in Uganda, no court, no any structures of state, no any institutions of state, that is of Uganda, that can any longer hide in the trenches of ignorance about dictatorship that is being entrenched in Uganda. Both sides have something to learn. Members of parliament have now learned from this judgment that in, all, in everything they do in parliament, they must act with decorum, they must respect themselves, they must observe the rules and procedure of parliament. On our part as a government, we now have learned that sometimes we don't need to come out uh, with full force to hide the situation. <laughs>
to hand over. Uh, that is according to Peter Wakova. Um, and then uh, Tony Sugu Okui on our Twitter handle, you say, unfortunately, it was the outcome Ugandans expected. However, not as a signal or sign of hopelessness, but acknowledgement of failed systems. It will rain eventually. Uh, well, um, optimistic um, Okui there. Semba Lulu Charles, this verdict wasn't a surprise to anybody who has been following events in courts, challenging the status quo, especially if it involved the president. Therefore, it was expected. Uh, thank you very much, Okui. Uh, Semalulu Charles, um, as well. Uh, sorry, uh, that was Semalulu Charles' uh, uh, comment. Uh, let's go to Kansime Grins, who says, the judges who concurred with the Constitutional Court ruling demonstrated um, intrepidity and spirit of patriotism. They know where Ugandan has gone through and know who can take us to the promised land. I salute these judges as among heroes of our struggle. Bravo. Okay, there we go. Um, where, where, where else? Where else? Uh, that is Kansime. Walter Edadu Walters. You say the opposition would have won their appeal, but the way they conducted themselves during the parliament activities made them lose it. It um, lose it as Uganda. We need now to learn how to vote. People who represent us in the house. Wow. Um, John Agiru. Let's go. Uh, this is your comment. NTV Uganda, they did, n they did it to make their master smile. Since Uganda got independence, it has never seen the credibility of judiciary. Let all Ugandans put their hopes to God. He is the final judge. Mala, you are, um, you are l seeing all this, uh, this reaction coming in from uh, uh, Ugandans and um, uh, their thoughts on the final judgment. Uh, that is the age limit ruling that was made yesterday. What do you make of it? You know, um, like I told you yesterday, and unfortunately, of course, being in the journalism space, you could not just, you know, tell what our, you know, opinions were. But it seems like the, you know, view of many Ugandans is that this was expected. Only that experts yesterday came out to say that maybe the judgment could actually was much better compared to the initial one of the lower court. Um, of course, it being the constitutional court because the initial ruling uh, by the constitutional court was a judgment, a 4-1 judgment. And yesterday's judgment was pretty much a balance. We were just shy of having, you know, a tally right there, a 4-3 judgment so to speak. But uh, what caught the eye of many is that um, Council Male Mabirizi is still saying that we are not yet defeated and this is not the end of the road necessarily. He's saying that he has uh, intentions to appeal to the regional court so to speak. Of course this is going to be a small snowballing kind of ruling. Let's see if he actually you know makes his articulations good and uh, you know goes forward to appealing uh, you know this particular you know issue at the regional court stage but um the other thing that was coming on for um you know david of course we did see this yesterday and um it's a matter that is still being you know talked about right now is matters to do with rafael magezi of course the member of parliament who tabled this particular you know age limit um in parliament and um voters in his region and we're talking about igara west um they they actually they came out yesterday and they did meet the deputy speaker of parliament saying that um mr magezi has intentions to split, um, you know, his constituency, Gara West, into two regions. And so they came out to tell, you know, um, Jacob Olanya that, you know what, we are not in support of this. If he feels like he has lost his clout, he has lost his support base in Gara West, let him try and rally for a ministerial post instead of splitting our region. We do not want that. That was interesting to see, especially him coming out, uh, you know, a, a few days ago saying that, you know what it's about time this age limit conversation you know goes under because it has affected his leadership in his constituency so david i don't know what your views are on the same of course as seeing of course i'm going we're going to see you know more reactions in this day especially you being the social media guru <laughs> well on the same. I, I i have to tell you i think first of all my my, my personal uh, thought is that um it comes at um, a very very convenient time because it comes like i said before um towards the Easter season and um, I'm, I'm 
quite quite confident by the time we get over uh, the festive season that is the Easter season the discussion will have changed from uh, uh, the age limit to the public order management uh, act because um, we all know uh, Bobby Wine's concerts are meant to happen this weekend over the Easter season right and uh, I think there's um, I, I, I suspect of there's going to be some uh, some confusion and uh, the headlines are now going to be about um, the concerts that haven't happened or have happened and not the age limit and um, I think that was that was quite something but of course uh, well, when you keep going through uh, the comments uh, that come through on our social media platforms um, especially this one um, Haruna who says the court ruling to uphold the age limit was not dependent I think they are exercise they, they exercise their power of independency since we vest power in their ruling to be final we should accordingly abide with the ruling I think Mr. Museveni is not the Uganda's problem the only problem Ugandans have is that they take their stomach forth than anything else. In other words, their stomach leads them. That's so, Haruna. <laughs> that's Haruna. So the, 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 the opinions of Ugandans, their thoughts are quite interesting. Um, of course, like expected, they are divided. Uh, the ones that are in support of Mr. Museveni and the NRM um, will come up with you know comments like that. And then um, those that are in opposition, we all know what we expect from them. They'll come up with uh, uh, comments that show that their dis dissatisfaction right. of the ruling. So um, it's it's it's... It's a story that I think if it had happened probably, let's say, Tuesday next week, mm -hmm. uh, would have taken over the whole week. We would have seen processions, would have seen uh, politicians come out to take advantage of this situation. But the fact that it has come out at a time when we're going into the festive season, I think it's uh, the festive season is going to uh, cloud it out. And uh, by Tuesday, I predict, we won't be talking about this. I would be even surprised if I see a headline tomorrow mm -hmm. about the age limit. You I'd know? be surprised to be honest because you'd be surprised. Yes, because it's Friday. <laughs> uh, we're having um, uh, we're having uh, what do they call it? The cross, the cross, uh, the, the, cross yes. uh, the, the the road of the cross. Yes, yeah. um, we. I, 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 I expect to have another image, another headline tomorrow because it's Good Friday, All and right. then of course we get into Sunday, which is Easter Sunday. You don't expect anything age limit to take uh, from center stage, and then we get into Monday, which is still Easter Monday. And then with all these days, I think we, we will have gotten tired and we will have moved on. Probably we will now be discussing uh, Bobby Wine's <laughs> failed or happened concerts. And oh. that is my prediction. <laughs> okay, David, time will tell. Of course, on Tuesday, we'll be right here. And of course, we'll be monitoring what happens in the political wave, of course, during this Easter season. But to seek your views, what are your views? Keep them coming on this particular ruling. Do you think that this ruling was more of a political, you know, kind of question or a legal question was it a political question or a legal question what are your views on the same the hashtag is morning at ntv across all the social media platforms at this point in time we'd like to take a short breather we'll be back with more about good friday and easter eggs don't go too far You're watching Morning at NTV.